the kitchen garden of Rubovia Castle, the head gardener was busy looking after his cabbages. Well, Rubina, there's still a great deal of work to be done. It's the slugs. Look at that one, eating away. Hello, Weatherspoon. Good morning, Your Majesty. I'm hiding from the Queen. She's in one of her difficult moods. She's being very bossy about cabbages. We must grow them by the million and sell them by the million. Rubovian cabbages must be eaten all over the world. That's what the Queen wants, Weatherspoon. Do what you can, there's a good fellow. But, but I... Poor old Weatherspoon. He always got the difficult jobs. Fancy having to grow and sell cabbages by the million. Just one man and a cat. Money making ideas from the Queen. How very annoying. Come on, puss. Inside the castle, the Queen was bathing Pongo, her pet dragon, and making little cooing noises. Good boy! Good boy! She sounded rather like a pigeon. Pongo liked being bathed, but hated the cooing noises. So did the King, who came in rather quickly by mistake. Ah, oh, Rufus! Uh, yes, my love? Have you spoken to Mr. Weatherspoon about the cabbages? Yes, my love. Have you been firm about it? Yes, my love. Best quality suitable for export? Yes, my love. Good. Now you can go. Yes, my love. The king hurried out onto the terrace. Oh dear, if only the queen would leave them all in peace. His Majesty King Boris of Borsovia. No, Boris. Hello, Rubovia. Nice day. Good to see you, Boris. I've just dropped in to give you a present. A little gift from me to you. From Borsovia to Rubovia. Long may our countries be friends. Ah, oh, thank you very much, Boris. Not at all, Rubovia. It's a pleasure. Goodbye, Rubovia. How extraordinary. I wonder what it can be. It's a clock. Quite old. It's probably early Padonian. Ooh what are you doing, Rufus? A present, a clock, from old Borsovia. The Queen was delighted. What a charming gesture. How very kind of him. Yes, King Boris of Borsovia's gift was certainly a great success. It's just right for the front room. Tell Weatherspoon that I want it set over the mantelpiece. You'd better appoint him honorary clockwinder to his majesty. Immediately, please. Hello, Lord.
Lord Chamberlain? Witherspoon, there's a royal command here for you. Oh, go ahead. It is the command of King Rufus that Albert Obadiah Witherspoon be appointed clockwinder to his majesty. Long live the king. Long live the king. But we haven't any clocks. We have now. Ah. It's in the front room. Is there a uniform with this job? Or anything? No, sorry, not even a hat. Good day. That evening, the royal clockwinder put the clock on the mantelpiece in the front room. How does it look? All right. Just what we wanted. Well done, Weatherspoon. It's a very smart clock, sir. Yes, yes. Just right. Suddenly, Mr. Weatherspoon discovered something interesting. Uh, ooh. What's the matter, Weatherspoon? There are lots of wiggly designs carved along the front. And some writing as well, a little piece of poetry. Listen. He who hears the chime of the clock will straightway turn into a block. Ooh, it's a spell. We're all going to be turned into blocks. Perhaps it's only a joke. King Boris does play tricks on people. I'm not so sure. Remember the garden fate last year? When the fortune teller's tent collapsed on him. He was very cross about it. Yes, and he saw the tent peg in your hand, sire. Oh dear. Here's another bit I hadn't seen. Listen carefully. The whole thing reads... He who hears the chime of the clock will straightway turn into a block unless before he hears the sound he lifts his feet right off the ground. Anon. It's going to strike. It's just the right... Rufus! Lord Chamberlain! Don't you rise when a lady enters the room? Have you forgotten your manners? Well, dear, it's like this. When the clock strikes... Well, your feet feet must... Good night! I think it's time I went to bed, sir. The Queen didn't turn into a block. She had her feet on the ground. That's because she's a she-sire. The poem says, he who hears the chime of the clock. So we don't know if it's a joke or not. Pongo, the dragon sire, he sleeps in the front room at night. If he's still there in the morning, everything's all right. But the queen would be furious if he turned into a block. It's either him or us, sire. Next morning, Rubina was searching for slugs and Mr. Weatherspoon was admiring his cabbages when the Queen appeared. Well done, Weatherspoon. Very good progress. I'm pleased to tell you that I've left a first-class cabbage in the front room for your approval, ma'am. Splendid! It's carefully packed in a cardboard box. I'll inspect it later. Inside the castle, the King and the Lord Chamberlain were horrified. There was a block in front of the fireplace. Oh, my goodness! Poor Pongo! Look out! It's going to strike! It's 
striking more than eight. It's gone wrong. Ooh. Help! 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 Sounds like the king. We'd better go. Oh my goodness! Hurry up! Oh. Mr. Weatherspoon came to the rescue and stopped the clock after it had struck 35. Are you all right, Your Majesty? Ooh! Doing your exercises, sir? Well done, Weatherspoon. You saved our lives. Thank you very much. But Weatherspoon didn't turn into a block. His feet were on the ground. Of course I didn't turn into a block. It's all a practical joke. But Pongo, the block in the fireplace, a cardboard box containing my prize cabbage. What? Pongo's quite safe. Everyone started to look cross, so Mr. Weatherspoon decided that it was time he left. Chamberlain, we've been had. Bamboozled by a silly trick. There's only one thing we can do about it. What's that, sire? Go fishing. Come on. Oh, yes. Well, after that, the clock was mended. By Mr. Weatherspoon, of course. And nobody ever mentioned cabbages again. <laughs> <laughs>